What's good, Jean? <laughs> Come on. We literally... Right, just cut, just cut, just we're cut. Very... <laughs> no, we're not cutting shit. What's good, Jean? Welcome back. Today, yes, today, we are reacting to what is this, part four? Yes, yeah, part four. Part four of Blink of an Eye. Um, I'm pretty excited. You left me. You left me yesterday without watching it, asshole. So, so now we're watching it today. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. 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 But that's why. But that's it's okay why though. You had a long day. You had a long day yesterday. Yeah. So I completely understand. It's all right. You guys are still getting it on time anyway, so it's not like it matters. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. There we go. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. Original. Or or the free video link will be down in the description. I have to keep saying free because that's what it is. Let's get into the video. They told the Florida and Fox Racing. We've been here all week for Speed Week, and if you're joining us for the first time here at Free Free today, promises to be a truly exciting day of racing. Dale, welcome to Totally NASCAR. Great to be here. It's uh, great to be back at Daytona and try to win some. It's crazy races. how this how footage looks so good. You got Michael Waltrip. Yeah. Morning, Dale Jr. Michael's doing a great job out there. So that guy's name is Steve and Burns, and he was a NASCAR reporter races. up until um, race, about a year year he died. Um, so you know what the be he died of cancer. Um, oh, wow. and at the beginning of the film, you saw Michael Waltrip putting on like his hat with the camera on it. And he was talking to that little kid and he was holding like the mic up and telling him what to do. Yeah. That was actually Steve Burns, kid, Bryson. Oh, okay. And like, so yeah, so they're kind of like getting him to like follow in his dad's footsteps. Cause his dad was an amazing reporter. His dad was, was like top notch when it came to like NASCAR reporting. Everyone respected him. Everyone liked him. Super, super down to earth guy. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a little backstory that I that I didn't even know I needed. But thank you. Yeah. I wouldn't have even known that if it wasn't for you. Probably. <laughs> Thursday no, Steve Burns was an awesome dude. Races. I'd be learning We're so much to from get you. our starting spots in the Daytona 500. That's what I'm here for. I was up in the top five, six when I when I was running through third gear, instead of shifting at the perfect time, you know, I was focused on making the move, and I'm like, ah. Uh, the engine hit the rev limiter and I lost all my power. And when that happened, cars start going by me and I grab fourth and it's too late. Damn. And I finished ninth, I think, in my qualifying race, a race that I had put myself in a position to win. That sucks. You talking about- <clears throat> It was just a qualifier, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. That's a rookie mistake. And you're 16 years in. You can't do that, I would tell myself, and I would tell Buffy, and I would I would tell my team. And I was not looking forward to seeing Dale. Two days before the 500, and I'm walking toward my bus, and as I'm heading that way, I pass Dale's bus, and the door swings open. He said, hey, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they use that clip? I walked in and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry. That's my fault. He said, what this is really about? cool. I said, I should have won that damn race. I messed up. He said, no, you shouldn't have. I should have won it. You shouldn't have won it. That don't matter. That was yesterday. Here's how we're going to win the Daytona 500. Oh, it was so awesome to, to, to hear his response to what I had dwelled on for 24 hours and his focus on the prize what mattered and uh dale's like we got to work together we got to push we got to shove we got to push each other we got to hang together this man Me seemed and very inspirational Jr. yeah i i love this part we get to it's the a great front. part when we get to the front we're going to stay there we were going to work together we were going to draft together we were going to push and and i i found that i loved it like i said yeah that's perfect let's do it but I also didn't find it to be overly realistic because, you know, I'm starting 20th, I think, back that way somewhere, and he's up front, and Dale Jr. is somewhere in between, and there's 39 other cars out there. You know, how are you going to do that? I mean, happen, telling me and Michael that we so, to all real, work real quick, though, because, man, all is that, like, the 2001 season was one of the craziest seasons in, like, of all of NASCAR. Obviously, starting with like the Daytona 500 and everything that obviously happened with that, yeah. but there was like other like small things that kind of went on too. Like, like they'll touch on like the stuff that happened with like DEI after like during the 2001 season, but like 
2001 was the first year that Fox like sports got a hold of like NASCAR and they put all the like money into like NASCAR, like with promotions and stuff like that. And so that was a big thing. Yeah. And then Jeff Gordon ended up, uh, that was the first year he ran the, uh, the flames. He, 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 uh, had a sponsor called DuPont, which was a paint company. Mm-hmm. And, um, so he ran this rainbow scheme and everyone called him the rainbow warrior. The and, rainbow uh, warrior. yeah. Yeah, and then like 2001, he debuted these sick flames on the side. I'm a I'm a Gordon fan. A, I love Jeff Gordon. Um, so Jeff Gordon ended up winning the uh, the uh, 2001 championship as well, um, which is really cool. Uh, so, but like there was so many ups and downs in the 2001 season, and they touch a lot of it because a lot of it happened to like Dale Earnhardt's team. Um, but there's a really good video called uh it's it's nascar seasons and like it like they go through like every season and kind of explain what happened Mm -hmm. and there's one for 2001 it's like 40 minutes long or something like that but that one is super like informative on specific on that specific season but i'm sure a lot of people would love to see something like that as well because that's really well put together too well shit if y'all want to see us react to that is it on youtube yeah Hey, if y'all want to see us react to that, let us know down in the comments, and we'll, shit, we can make it happen after after we're done with this, or you know, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Yeah, I'm done. Sure. All right, let's get back into it. Three of us help each other all day, just us. One of us will win, and I'm like, that's a crazy plan. No, that's not gonna. I'm saying this in my head, you know. I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm like, yeah, you, yeah, let's all work together. But in my mind, I'm like, that's silly. I'm just going to do what I need to do for myself. I'm going to be selfish, and I'm going to win this race. If I win it, it's going to be because of what I did. That's the first time I'd ever been in a, in a, in a meeting with a car owner that was laying out to me how we were going to go win the race. And I left that bus a different person, and he very specifically told me exactly how we were going to go about winning this race. If I'm a crew chief right now, I'm really kind of concerned about how much tension these guys are feeling. This is the first race of the year, and there's a lot of tension going through the garage area right now. So who are the great passers in this race? The first and mm-hmm. foremost is Earnhardt. I mean, the man comes down here, he looks like he can see air. No matter where he goes, he gets the job done. I mean, even Little Lee, Dale Earnhardt Jr. back there, who's been learning a good lesson from his daddy, he's gonna be tough also. The anticipation, the drama, the pressure uh, building here as we get closer to NASCAR's greatest race, the Daytona 500, coming up here on Fox. Entering the 2001 season, Fox was coming on and Fox Sports was going to mean mainstream every week network coverage. And and so this was a big day. It was Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, uh, Larry McReynolds in the booth for the first time. I was living those <clears> moments. <throat> you don't realize it at the time, but I'm in the TV booth. I'm a nervous wreck. I've never done anything like that before. And the Daytona 500 get ready to start. History, speed, he's so it's all that can be nerve wracking. Yeah, but he's so stupid. I, right? I, I, I love, I love DW man. He's, a million people he's great. This legendary speedway. He retired, um, um building, not this season, but last season. In the last end, season. We'll have one yep. Champion, one driver, not from driving, from uh, commentating. Oh, okay. And 500 yeah. miles of track. So what does he do now? Who will win the Daytona? Hang out, be retired. I feel it at Daytona and Talladega, but Daytona is a fast race car. And and there was no question. It, it became pretty obvious that, that DEI came to play. I thought they carried a Napa car in right there. I don't see a Napa Walker around here. Not yet. I'm still in bed. Michael Walter had every excuse <laughs> possible prior to entering the 2001 Daytona 500. Now he had everything he needed. What was he going to do with it? And that's what everybody was waiting around to see. 
woke up that February morning, and I'm like, they're not beating me today. It ain't happening. There you go. It's confidence right there. Right? First time in his life he had. Well, not in his life, but definitely the first time in a very long time of his cup career he had confidence. Oh, I'm glad he went into this one with confidence. <laughs> right? big chance for even more people to know that Michael Waltrip was a value or Michael Waltrip was a laugh. Man, that track is huge. Just be goosebumps. Just three wide in the back straight. Thinking about this race. The cars were closer than ever. The draft was tighter than ever. The pack was bigger than ever. <clears throat> and as the laps wound down, people were getting more and more desperate. The calm, the, the patience, they were beginning to, to run out. And so things kept getting tighter and tighter and closer and closer. And then finally, coming off turn two, just as I'd gotten to the front of the field, It's Tony Stewart flipping, going, going around. Jesus. <clears throat> I don't remember how many cars, but over half the, the lead pack done. And here's another angle. It's a big one. It's what we've all been here. This kind of racing is going to happen. A horrible crash on the back straightaway. Tony Stewart goes for one of the wildest rides in recent memory of Daytona. I mean, he ended up having a Hall of Fame career, so it all it all worked out for him. It all worked out. I sat in my car and I looked in the mirror and um, saw that black car sitting there, and I thought, <clears throat> "Wow, it's me and him and Dale Jr. and we're at the front, just like he said we'd be." No love so for I'm Steve Park, the, the other member of DEI. Like <laughs> well, Michael's here, Dad's there, he sees me. If I do something, he's going to go, why'd you do that, you know? And so I'm thinking, man, he I, literally I win this it. race without screwing this up, you know? And that's the crazy win. part, he called Michael it. Win. I want to win. Yeah, that's Dad what I'm saying, dude, it's poetic, man. Seven laps to go in the biggest race in the world, the greatest like, race in the world. This isn't something that made up, the story has been the same. using every line on the track to hold back. I mean, he was he was a one-man dam. Whoa! Earnhardt, Sterling got into Earnhardt. Dale is doing everything he can to keep Sterling behind him because this is a chess match at high speed. You know, I'm holding this field back to let my guys go. And normally, Dale would never make a move like that it just seemed like something I had never seen before. Michael Waltrip leads the Daytona 500. Right now, the car behind him is his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Jr. and I stayed tight together, and we, we kept pushing ahead. And Dale was the one that was in the storm. He was executing the plan that he had shared with me. And it was working perfectly. I truly believe that nobody thought it was really going to happen until the car crossed the finish line. Two to go, bud. Two to go. Out of way. You're excited, you know, that they're in the lead, but you also know that that can change. You just thought something else was going to take that away. That never in a million years could 0 for 462 turn into a Cinderella story. 
Come on, man. I was off turn four and headed for the checkered flag mm. when my spotter said they're wrecking behind you. Big trouble. Big wreck behind them. Stand them back. Come on. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. Now I understand. Yeah. I understand it all. Nobody wanted him to be hurt. What kills me more than anything is uh, Ken Trader. Listening to what Ken Trader had to say about it just kills me every time. With confetti and champagne and and family and friends. Yo, can you get that off your face, bro? Like, just, that was really bothering me. beautiful <laughs> scene. <a> beautiful sight. <laughs> God, I can't believe it's over. Uh, now, let me ask you a question, Daryl. How much better mm. does one... <laughs> what is that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She got it. She got it. It sounds you a lot better. up on my record, I don't care. But I do know this. Me and my brother have both won the Daytona 500. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. Michael Walker. Look at the excitement. Just a flood of emotions and, you know, relief in, in a lot of ways. Um, it just felt like it was just going to make a lot of things that have been difficult and challenging to live with day in and day out so much better. I think I was in shock. I couldn't believe Dale's plan worked like it did. I couldn't believe I'd won the Daytona 500. I couldn't believe all we had been through to get where we were, we were, we were gonna go celebrate the Daytona 500. Yes, sir. I, I, I just couldn't wait for Dale to get there. I knew when he got there, I was, I was gonna get the best hug ever. I was more excited about that hug than I was the trophy or the money. And, um, you know, that hug never came. Hmm. Okay. Trader has climbed out of his car. He mm. Earnhardt crashed to get and went over there, thinking he's going to be aggravated. And we all know what he was. It was very serious. Uh, so I didn't, you know, I mean, I was just, I was surprised. When I came down, I started asking Danny Collar, his spotter, like, how, what, what did Dale say? And he goes, he didn't say anything. He said, Richard's been calling him, but he, won't, he hasn't responded. I just uh, thought it was another crash. I seen it on TV. It didn't look that bad. It looked like a, just a, another tough crash. And I hollered at Dale, hollered at him a couple of times, and uh, you know, he didn't answer me back, which was unusual. So I started walking up through there. <laughs> This isn't what you would expect. You know, you usually see the guys get out and, um, you know, it just looked like it was uh, taking a little bit longer for them to get dad out or whoever. I don't even, I couldn't even tell at that point really what the struggle was, what the holdup was, but it was a, it was a situation. <laughs> As we go off the air, as long as I live, I'll never forget the ambulance comes out of the track. That ambulance was doing 15 miles an hour, maybe 20, just creeping down the road, headed to the hospital. We were probably 15 minutes in to the press box interviews and I'm watching Michael and and I see Brooke. Um, she looked at me and she went like this, like stop the interviews. And told them that unfortunately 
we had to cut the press conference short. So that, that made me uncomfortable. I mean, that made me think, oh God. When we got into the elevator and Michael and Buffy were in this corner of the elevator, so my right, and I stopped the elevator and I looked at Michael and Buffy and I said, I'm so sorry, but we've lost Dale. Fuck. She didn't waste no time. No, I think she was the worst person in that scenario to tell him. Yeah. I remember wanting to leave. <clears throat> I remember wanting to leave, and uh, I think that's when the reality of it set in, finally. You know, I, sometime between the elevator and the van ride and, and getting in the motorhome and getting, you know, everyone else to leave, um, I guess it's just that fight or flight. And, you know, I knew I had to uh, be strong. So. Um, I can't get over this. How does how she how does she just do that like that? How did she just. What the way that. Say, uh, how did she just say them? it like that? Yeah. How did she just say yeah. it like that? Like. Yeah. It's uh that that was like if that's exactly how that went 100 percent, i felt like that was a little um that was a little cold like, yeah a little cold uh and i know obviously like in the scenario might have been a little bit different but for her to like vividly remember like <clears throat> like just one you're on an elevator so you can't go anywhere yeah and you're gonna tell him in an enclosed environment that not only his best friend but his owner and his competitor and someone who he's seen, you know, obviously more than every Sunday because they were friends. Pretty you know, sure he was a role model to him, too. Yeah. Yeah. And just to tell him that, that, you know, that, that is, is everything, you know, it's it just that's just tough. Blows my mind. Yeah. I, I'll I'll never get over um, Ken Schrader because uh, Ken Schrader was the one to pull the window net down and look inside mm -hmm. and see how Dale was. And um He's he's an amazing person because he's the money he's probably been offered to say exactly what he saw and he will he has kept his word he will never tell anybody exactly what he saw and that's but a, that's a good that But the, the thing right is thing with ba basilar skull fractures um everyone kind of understands what exactly is happening mm -hmm. and what you can kind of picture that he he may have saw yeah. And none of none of it's pretty. I mean, it's it's a horrifying thought. So when when he when he came up and he knew that Dale was in trouble, um, and, is... and his frantic his frantic movements to get the EMTs faster. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't wish that upon like anybody. Mm -hmm. Like you have to live with what you saw forever. Oh, like, he'll live with and, it forever. And that's just like that's something you have to just go through alone because you're not gonna tell anyone what you saw. Yep. yep. So like that's so, probably just that's that's like a horrifying. Thing. I I com I commend what a lot of people have to go through that that were a part of this event. Man, it's it's crazy, it really is. But Schrader is one that will always stick with me. Every interview he's done since, you know, every every time he talks, and you can see how kind hearted he is, and how like just a gentle person he is, and what he also is carrying. Yeah. Oof. Tears that's, me up inside, man. Yeah, that's some tough shit. And then being in the in the bus, just um, in shock. This perfect day that I dreamed of turned out to be, you know, one of the saddest days of my life. And that, like, uh, that one. Okay, I don't know if it's just me. <clears throat> But seeing like little posts like that would bother me. Cause hmm. like, yeah, it's my life, but I don't like 
I, but I mean, I guess like at that point, you just kind of have to go with it because that's just the lifestyle you live. Like your life is going to be talked about whatever happens. Yeah. People are going to yep. make headlines. So like you have to deal with it. But like that shit would still suck. Like I know that there would still be some type of emotion towards it. At least. I oh, know. yeah. And and like you also have to realize is that his son is an ass car driver as well. Yeah. And like whenever he seems to it's crazy because whenever junior seems to be talking about his dad like he calls him dad and stuff like that but he can almost like turn off that switch where like he talks about it from an event standpoint where Mm -hmm. like it's it's a piece of history and not talking about his father his loved one you know his his mentor like dying he talks about it almost as if it like he understands the history of it so yeah. when he talks about this, like what happened and with his dad and everything, it's it's almost like he can keep himself very mild mannered. And a lot of people thought that like he wasn't showing emotion and that there's something wrong with him for not showing emotion, like in, in interviews and stuff like that. Cause like, you're like, your dad I mean, died. There's nothing wrong instead... with not showing emotion, but it's just like, he could just be handling it better than others as well. Like you just never know with people. Yeah. Which I mean, he, he goes into that a little it, like later on because they go through some important things that happened after the fact so gotcha gotcha one moment that he was supposed to have in a selfish way was robbed of that then you add in that's my best friend oh yeah by the way it's my boss oh by the way he just hired me and i just won the daytona 500 for him and i don't get to celebrate with him when you start adding all those things and you start thinking about um We got to the hospital and I walked right into dad's room and um, I knew right away when I seen him that it was, it was just as bad as it could be. And um, I turned out, I turned around and walked back out of there and uh, we spent 30 minutes at that hospital before they finally told us that he was gone. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, But after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. I think right there would be the perfect place to stop it for this this video. Yeah. (laughs) That, um, that, uh, press conference from mike helton um is etched in my brain uh i like i said earlier is that like almost everyone thing, my, right? yeah yep yep everyone my age remembers where they were um who are nascar fans remember where they were when uh you know dale crashed um oddly enough i was at a uh i was at a roller skating rink And uh, it was like NASCAR was so popular back then. Like it's it's still pretty popular, but it was so popular back then. From Mm -hmm. 2001 to like so so NASCAR's most popular was 2006, um, ratings wise. Um, But like that 2001 that because of the everything they did in the late 90s to push it to where it was, and then getting to Fox. So from like 2001 to like 06 was like it's super like popular period, and um. So it was on a big screen at the roller skating rink. And I remember watching that wreck. I stopped, you know, while everyone was skating in circles because, you know, it's NASCAR and there was a wreck and, mm-hmm. you know, it was the end of the race. People and I was like, watch, whoa, yeah. crazy. So um, and then I remember going home and uh, man, my we got home and I was sitting there talking about the race with my dad because my dad's a big NASCAR fan, too. Mm-hmm. And Dale Earnhardt was his idol like that was his favorite driver mine was jeff gordon and um we were watching speed i think it was we, oh, i forgot what we were watching speed. but they they isn't that the fucking movie with like the bus no speed's a net speed used to be a network um oh, that covered oh, like oh, auto God. racing Touching yeah like a movie. We're, no we we're watching the speed channel gotcha. and or, it was something like that but they ended up going to that press conference and 
when Mike Helton said that, I remember my dad crying. Like my dad is a strong grown Southern redneck from Kentucky. And to see him crying, you know, was just, it killed me inside. And like knowing that, like, you know, he was gone and, you know, it changed everything. And it was, it was such a bad day, man. That was such a rough day for, that was probably the darkest day in NASCAR's history. And it's like, you know, only people who were like into NASCAR back then and now would be the only people that would know like what, like, like what they were doing that day. <clears throat> some, some people truly stopped watching NASCAR after Dale died. Um, some people today who still watch NASCAR claim that NASCAR died when Dale died. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't. Um, like I said, 2006 was NASCAR's most popular year. Uh, ratings wise for like television and and um attendance but um it's just the impact that he had on people's lives it was a huge like, impact like, like not even, not so even the sport because he was he was a he had a huge impact on the sport but like he had a huge impact on people's lives to the point where people will only use stuff like stp because of richard petty People will only use, you know, like certain brands because of, you know, who they, who, who they, they like. um, you know, who they associate with. Yeah. I know in Sla- in one of, um, I think it's Slap Shoes' video where he talks about Spam being on Lake Speed's car and he loves Spam. So he wanted a Spam car, you know, so it's yeah. just, it's stuff like that where like people, he, Dale Earnhardt turned it into a brand. His, his number was a brand. He was a brand. And um, people got that tattooed on their bodies. People would only go what? to like use good rent. Yeah, people got that that three. Oh hell no! Nah. Yeah, that okay, three. Maybe, maybe the three. That, that yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, people would get his his signature. His signature is a very famous signature, which goes along with his brand. They would get his signature tattooed on his body as well. I mean, it's it's you know, yeah. GM Goodwrench. You know, people. You see that black number three, you immediately think good wrench. And it's just stuff like that where, you know, today it's a little different where certain um sponsors don't sponsor full time seasons anymore. Yeah. Um they they'll do they'll break it up into like quarters or halves or anything, you know, what you will. But back then, DuPont was Jeff Gordon's sponsor. Good wrench, you know, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jr., Bud. That's it. You would Bud. only see you would only see Budweiser on a on a Dale Jr. car, and he likes that shit. well, yeah, yeah. Man. But like, it's stuff like that where like you would see certain things on cars, and he just turned it into such a brand. Mm-hmm. And when he died, it was almost like that brand, like it didn't die, but like there was a piece of it missing. Like yeah. no one could say, "Oh man, there's I can't wait for the 2003 diecast of you know." Dale Earnhardt's car or something like that because like there was there nothing was, going yeah, forward was, yeah I mean Kevin Harvick tried it as as best as he could and they actually kind of like like I said 2001 was a crazy year so I'm you really excited learn, you learn to, to see the after. rest of this movie I appreciate you staying, sharing your story as well thank you Dude, no, no problem man it's it's a part of me and yeah I, I look back at it and it's sad but Dude, it's it's it was a major moment in American sports history. Yeah, literally. For sure. Hey, if anyone, I've I've already seen a couple comments of like where people were like on that day, but if more people like are watching this video and you guys want to share, let me know down in the comments um what where you were on that day or what you remember happening on that day or how it was for you, how it affected you. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying the reactions. Uh, last one will be out Friday. So look forward to that. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.